Hey. Thank you so much. I, I, I kind of don't know what to say because I think I ought to just go on talking and say more nice things. And I could just listen. That would be good. It's also kind of terrifying to come up on stage after Lorne Michaels and <laughs> John Mullaney and Colin Jost and it would be a foolish person who tried to tell a joke. <laughs> but since Lorne Michaels mentioned the Valley of the Dolls, <laughs> I wanted to remind people in the room who might not remember that the Valley of the Dolls was published in the same publishing season as Philip Roth's novel, The Port Noise Complaint. And when Jacqueline Suzanne was asked what she thought about Philip Roth's great novel. She said, I think he is very talented, but I wouldn't want to shake his hand. <laughs> True story. True story. Look, Ayad, thank you so much, wherever you are. Thank you. It really means a lot to me with, with with the cultural experience that we share, that, that you should say such, such kind words. Um, I'm gonna put on my reading glasses, otherwise I don't know what I'm saying. Um, also, I wanted to say, hi everybody. It's, it's nice to be back. It's nice to be back as opposed to not being back, which was also an option. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty glad the dice rolled this way. I, I just want to, oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to, really, I just want to say th three things quickly. Um, one is, the first is, that I'm proud of my long association with Pan America. It's 20 years and more now. I used to be president, but ex-president is a better job, <laughs> um, which I've been doing for a long time. And, and I have to say that when we started the World Voices Festival, we thought that that was an important moment at which in the aftermath of 9-11, America and the rest of the world were becoming estranged from each other, and that at least, at least through the world of books and ideas and writers, we could do something to rectify that. And we didn't know, you know, this is a city with incredibly rich cultural life. And the idea of trying to introduce a new thing into the program of New York cultural life was, at risk, we didn't know if anybody would come. And instead, people came in their crowds and they've continued to do so. I'm really proud of it. And I've often used, and I will use it again now, the immortal words of Kevin Costner, who said, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> uh, I don't think Kevin Costner's ever been to the World Voices Festival. But <laughs> But I will say that Penn has, in my view, never been more important than it is now. We, all of us who have been involved with Penn have spent a lot of our lives fighting on behalf of writers in other countries. Tonight we recognize the courage of an Iranian writer and we've done so over and over in other writers from all, all over the world. But right now we face a problem in this country and Penn has to fa face that problem head on just as we have done in other countries. Um, the attack on books, the attack on teaching, the attack on libraries in 
well, how can I put this, Florida. <laughs> has never been more dangerous, never been more important to fight. I was really proud to hear yesterday that Pan America, together with my publisher, Pe Penguin, uh, Penguin Random House, has taken this, uh, this, this step of bringing a lawsuit in Florida. <laughs> Colossally important and, well, let's hope we win. We need to win. Uh, I want to salute everybody working at Penn, working for this cause, the cause of free expression, and it's never been more significant. That's, that's one thing. Another thing I want to say, if I can be so indulgent as to talk about what happened to me, with regard to, to what happened, the event at Chautauqua, New York, on August the 12th of last year. I mean, I'm being awarded a Courage Award, but the true courage was not shown by me. After I was attacked, the first person who ran to defend me was Henry Reese of the Cities of Asylum Project in Pittsburgh, who was on stage with me to discuss that project's excellent work on behalf of endangered writers. When he saw what was happening, Henry, who is, I mean, Henry is not a young man. Henry is a little younger than me. That doesn't make him young. Henry, a man in his 70s, ran at my assailant, who was 24 years old, with a knife and tackled him, tackled him to the ground. Immediately after that, a substantial number of people in the front of the audience ran up to help him and jumped on top of my assailant and held him down, held him down, pinned him to the ground. And if it had not been for these people, I most certainly would not be standing here today. So I accept this award, thank you very much, but I accept it primarily on behalf of those who came to my rescue and saved my life. I was the, was the target that day, but they were the heroes. The courage that day was all theirs, all theirs. I don't know their names, I never saw their faces, but that, that large group of people I owe, I owe my life to. And we should applaud them, let's just applaud them once more. I just have one last thing to say. It's something I've said a number of times before, but I'm going to say it again. Terrorism must not terrorize us. Violence must not deter us. As the old Marxists used to say, la lutte continue, la lutte continua, the struggle goes on. <laughs>